Well, 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 I did not expect to be talking to you so soon. Happy to be talking with you, but we had a major update to the PFL playoffs that came out around 2 o'clock Eastern time on Thursday. In an unfortunate turn of events, PFL just announced that Denis Goltsov, the heavyweight and welterweight Magomed Umalatov, could not secure visas to travel to the UK for their semifinal fights on Saturday. Replacement fighters have stepped up. We have heavyweight Juan Adams and welterweight Delano Taylor stepping in for their fights. Huge loss to the PFL playoff in my opinion. This episode will be a very short PFL update based on the information that just came out Thursday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, just two days before these PFL playoff matchups. Let's go ahead and dive into the new matchups. Sabadou C versus Carlos Leal remains unchanged, thankfully, but Juan Adams is stepping in for Dennis Goltsov to face Matthias Scheffel. Now, this is quite the change, as Juan Adams only had one PFL regular season appearance, but he was very impressive with a five-point second-round finish. Juan Adams is three inches taller and has a five-inch reach advantage. To recap, Matthias Scheffel earned three points in a decision win going one and one in the regular season. He is filling in for an injured Bruno Capeloza, and now Juan Adams is filling in for Denis Goltsov. So we kind of have a lot of fill-in fighters in this matchup, but we're going to have to make do with what we have. Luckily for Matthias Scheffel, he was already training for a slightly taller and longer fighter in Denis Goltsov, so hopefully it doesn't impact him too much with this last-minute opponent change. Juan Adams, he did get beat up pretty badly in round one of his PFL regular season fight, but in round two, he completed three of five takedown attempts, worked his way to a ground-and-pound victory, and got the job done. I think Juan Adams needs to use that same strategy in order to get a win here. I told you guys just earlier this week, Denis Goltsov was a dominant wrestler. I thought he was going to use that to his advantage, use that technique in order to secure a finish win, and I think Juan Adams will likely need to do the same. I think Mateus Scheffel has the advantage on the feet, but I think that Juan Adams will be able to get him to the mats, stay active enough on the ground, turn himself a win. Out of Juan Adams' last five victories, all of them ended by finish. So I'm still thinking that he will likely get it done in this one as well. Probably in the later rounds, we thought Denis Goltsov might win in round one. I think Juan Adams might get the finish in round two or three. So this was a pretty big change. I thought Dennis Goltsov was going to win it all this year. He's now no longer in the competition. Mateusz Scheffel gets the new opponent in Juan Adams, and we're going to take the last-minute replacement, Juan Adams, to get the win. The Ante Deliha versus Renan Ferreira fight is unchanged at heavyweight, but we had another change in the welterweight division. Rory McDonald is now going up against Delano Taylor, who is filling in for Magomed Umalatov. Delano is three inches taller. He earned three points during the regular season in his one appearance with a decision victory. To recap, Rory McDonald went one and one in the regular season and scored six points with a first round finish. That first round submission win earned him the six points, and he had a razor close decision loss against Sabadou C, who's also fighting in these playoffs as well. Delano Taylor is 2-1 and one in the PFL, and he's coming off a loss against Magomed Magomed Karimov back in July, which came by knockout. I think the path to victory is still going to be the same for Rory McDonald. I think he needs to utilize his wrestling, grind his way to a victory. Delano Taylor's opponents have had some success in the past with getting him to the ground and completing takedowns, but he does a very good job of getting up quickly. He does not typically stay on the ground long, so Rory's going to have to really dig deep in the gas tank, continually go for takedowns, and probably have to land, I would say, north of six takedowns to get the victory here. Delano Taylor, he is a very good fighter. He generally prefers to strike. He does mix in offensive wrestling a little bit more than the original opponent, Malgomed Umalatov, does. So Roar McDonald will need to adjust for that. Keep an eye on Delano Taylor using a little bit more of a well-rounded MMA approach, but still generally a preferred striker. I do think Roar McDonald wrestles his way to a victory here, but I think that this fight is going to go to a decision. Delano Taylor, again, a very good striker, and Roar McDonald will need to be careful on the feet. We're going to keep our original prediction of Roar McDonald as a 2022 welterweight champion. 
But with Dennis Goltsov no longer in the heavyweight championship running, we are going to go with Renan Ferreira. I think that the heavyweight champion this season is going to come out of the Ante de Lija versus Renan Ferreira fight, regardless of who gets that win. I think both of them are better than Juan Adams and Mateus Scheffel. So big changes on the heavyweight side of the bracket. I guess it is what it is at this point, but we need to go ahead and dive into the betting changes because we had a lot move around with the loss of Dennis Goldsov. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and take a look at how this impacts our betting. Our Sabaduce versus Carlos Leal and Ante Delija versus Renan Ferreira bets are going to stay the same. Listen to episode 11 to see what those were. For our two new PFL matchups, we have Juan Adams versus Mateus Scheffel. We're going with Juan Adams' money line minus 235. And with Rory McDonald versus Delano Taylor, we had Rory McDonald as an underdog. He's now favored in this fight. We have him at money line minus 230. This is the first time we've taken all chalk on a card. I don't usually like to do that, but with all the changes that happened to this PFL card, I'm feeling more comfortable taking the favorites. We do have some lines from the UFC fights that we were waiting on. Those have since come in. Martin Boudet versus Lukas Brezki. We were looking to see what the line would be for the fight to not go the distance. We took that at minus 215. Bruno Silva versus Gerald Mearshart. We were waiting to see fight to not go the distance. That actually is coming in around minus 360. So we're going to go with Bruno Silva by knockout for minus 134. Now that is a little greedy. I think Gerald Mearshart can win this fight by submission. It's a little bit of a risky bet, but at minus 134, I think that's how Bruno Silva gets the win. So we're going to give it a shot. Nate Landwer versus David Onama. I told you no matter what the line was, we're going to take David Onama by finish. That is minus 117. If I were you, I would hammer David Onama by finish. We only throw one unit on each bet for the podcast. That way we can keep it nice and fair. But for me, David Onama by finish at minus 117 is a steal and a chance to make a lot of money. I would really consider putting a few units down on that bet. David Onama, when he wins, he finishes the fight. At minus 117, that is beautiful. We are still waiting for alternate lines for Gabriel Benitez versus Charlie Ontiveros. If we can't get any by the start of the card, we're going to have to take Benitez. He is a large favorite. I prefer to grab him to win by finish to get the better odds. Otherwise, we're going to be taking him at around minus 350. It is what it is. He is going to win that fight. He's going to win it by finish, but with it being a prelim fight, they don't always give you alternate betting odds. To update the Homestyle Perfect Plate Parlay for the PFL, we had Sabadusi and Dennis Goldsov at plus 154. Obviously, we can't do that anymore with the loss of the Dennis Goldsov fight. So to try to keep you around the same with the odd standpoints, we're going with Sabadusi and Rory McDonald to win at plus 159. Good luck to all of us betting this weekend. There's a lot of fights to watch. It's going to be a nice long Saturday of fights. Let's go ahead and wrap up the podcast. Unfortunately for the PFL, I think these last minute changes are a pretty bad look for the organization. The fighters did have many weeks to secure visas for these fights, but ultimately, maybe they should have just kept this card in the US. We knew the fighters can fight there. They fought there during the regular season. They went overseas, which I loved the idea of, but it cost two fighters the opportunity for a million dollars. This is a short notice change, which will also impact the fighters who were originally scheduled to fight. Because they just spent an entire multiple week long training camp preparing for someone else. You know, it is what it is. Luckily, we were able to get this quick update out to the listeners because it had a big impact on our betting as well. Unfortunately for Dennis Goltsov in particular, we thought he was going to win it all this year. So this situation may have cost him $1 million. We bet him to win by finish in round one, which was one of our homestyle gravy locks of the week as well. He was in our homestyle PFL parlay. All kinds of things kind of fell apart with these changes. I think him being out is good news for the rest of the heavyweights because I thought he was the best competition. And hopefully the opponent change for Rory McDonald doesn't make a huge difference for him, who's also on his quest for $1 million. As always, please bet responsibly. If you have a gambling problem, call your state's hotline. 
My verdict scorecards will be posted Saturday morning for both the PFL and the UFC. Make sure you take a look at those as they will include these matchup changes. Please go follow at the Homestyle MMA Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and at Homestyle MMA Pod on Twitter. Check out www.thehomestylemmapodcast.podbean.com for additional information about the podcast. If you like today's quick update episode, again, I appreciate the listen. Please subscribe, like, follow, review, comment, anything that you possibly can. I had to quickly scramble to get this one out for you guys, but we're able to get it done. And just like we were originally planning on doing, we'll recap some excellent fights from the UFC and PFL cards next week and preview next week's matchups. Till next time, this was Sean Van Buren on the Homestyle MMA Podcast. Have a good one.